Okay, so hopefully uh, you didn't have any problems installing WAMP. What we're now going to do is just to make sure that we have everything running on the desktop, you should have WAMP Server 32. Let's go ahead and just double click on that and just wait for this to load everything up. Again, we want to say that we want to allow this. And what this will do if it wasn't uh, already done during installation is it will start up your local web server. So once that's finished, what we're going to do is head straight over to the browser. We're going to open up a new tab and we're going to come over to the URL localhost. So this is HTTP colon forward slash forward slash localhost. Now what this will do is it will point to your local web server. And this here is the default WAMP server landing page. We're going to remove these files because we're going to be going and creating our own files in this part. So now that we have this up, you want to keep this up in your browser. This is what we're going to be working on uh, throughout the rest of the series. So you want this uh, page up in your browser. And let's just go over to the WAMP directory that we saw in the last part. So inside of this WAMP directory are all of the files required. So you'll have things like the Apache files, you'll have your PHP configuration files. We're not going to dive too much into that because we don't really need to. But if we come over to this www directory, notice these files here. So these files here are exactly what you're seeing just over here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is delete them. If you want to keep these, you can go ahead and move them to a different location, but I'm just going to delete them. So now when we refresh this page, you can see that we have an index of forward slash. That basically means that we are viewing the directory here and we don't have any files. So now what we want to do is create our first PHP file, save it here, and then go ahead and see this in the browser. And then the rest of the series, you'll be good to go. So there are plenty of text editors available. However, I would highly recommend using Atom. Now, this is a very simple, very clean editor, and it just really moves everything out of the way. So you can just focus on learning PHP. So what you want to do is head over to atom.io. I'll leave a link to this in the course links. And you want to grab the Windows installer and make sure you have that downloaded and installed. It's very, very simple. So once you do have that installed, let's go over to Atom and I'll show you around and we'll create our first PHP file. OK, so now that Atom is loaded up, you'll probably see something like this. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just close off all of these files because all we really need to do is go ahead and create a new file. So what we're going to do is go ahead and create a new file and we are going to immediately go ahead and save this to that directory. So uh, we want to come over to WAMP www. And what we're going to do is first of all, save this out as uh, just an, any old file. So we can just call this one.php and let's go ahead and save this. So what you'll notice when you come over to your browser now that you have this file saved, when you refresh this page, you'll see that file just listed there and we can click on that. And this is now a PHP file that we can write any code in. Now, what we're going to be doing throughout the series is we're going to be creating an index.php file. And you'll notice the difference when I go ahead and create this now. So let's save this new file into the same directory. So we're going to say index.php. Save this just in here. And we'll close off this one because we don't really need that. Let's go back over to our local host here. Give that a refresh. And you see this looks like it's blank. Now, what's actually happened here is Apache has picked up on the fact that you've called a file index.php and it's loaded this as the main file. So it's automatically run this file. We don't need to click on it. And that's generally what happens when you visit a website. There's one file index.php or whichever language that's being used, and this will be shown to you first. So if we wanted to access that one.php file that we created earlier, we can manually uh, see that just in there or we can directly access the index.php file just in here. So that's the same file as if we just land on localhost. So this and this are the same. So hopefully that makes sense, but now let's get down to it and just go ahead and output something uh, using PHP. So to start a PHP file, we use a less than sign, a question mark, and then the text PHP. So if we come down, and we want to get rid of this last tag if this inserts it. We don't need an ending PHP tag. Uh, generally, you may see an ending PHP tag, but unless we're outputting any HTML or anything else below this, we do not need it. So throughout the series, we're just using a starting PHP tag. 
Okay, so now that we've done this, this will tell our web server that this is a PHP file, despite the fact we have an extension as well. And now we can just go ahead and write any code out. So let's go ahead and output something to the page. We'll leave it at that. And then of course, we'll carry on with the rest of the series. So let's use echo. This is a basically a command that says, well, anything after this just output to the page. So here we're going to use two single quotes and we're going to end the line with a semicolon. We end most lines in PHP with a semicolon. So inside of these two single quotes, and we can use double quotes as well, but we will get to that later. We're just going to output hello. Simple as that. So make sure you save this file out and come over to the browser. And remember, we are immediately hitting index.php and you should see that text just in there. So once again, we can go over to one.php. Remember, this is a completely separate file and we can go and edit this as well. So let's go ahead and just do the same thing just to kind of drill in how we go ahead and do this. So we open our PHP tags and then we go down and we echo out something within single quotes. So we're going to say one like so just to differentiate this between the other file. So let's save this one out, come over to the browser, refresh on one.php and we see the following. So we now basically have two PHP files just in here, but that should be enough for you to be able to create new files. And of course, throughout the series, we are going to be creating a couple of other files as well. Mainly, we're going to be working within index.php, but now we are all set up and we can carry on with the rest of the series.